you Windows users out there are going to be very pleased to know that they are discussing changing the Windows menu again. They just are regressing at this point in time. Let's go ahead and have a look at the details from some of the beta images that we have going forward. Thanks for checking out this video from Switched to Linux, where we talk about why you might want to consider switching to Linux or other privacy-minded operating systems and the reasons why you might want to. On Wednesdays, days, we talk Windows frequently around here. We talk about some of the changes, maybe some of the bugs, maybe some of the issues. Obviously, Linux is not also without its issues, but we do want to highlight some of the differences, contrast some of the things, and hey, this has actually been keeping me more up-to-date on Windows than I have stayed in the last couple years since I haven't used Windows or Microsoft in a long time. So if you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel and leave us a like and a comment down below. But with that, let's discuss Windows is changing their menu again. Now, a lot of the way that Windows has run has remained mostly consistent from the Windows 95 era, as that was designed as a, a very good system that generally worked well for many years. Now, the only reason we're seeing some changes right now is some of the changes with uh, brought on with a cell phone generation who are being raised on tablets and phones, it does make a little bit of sense to change around how some of the menu systems are working uh, in, that, uh, in that front. But with that, what we want to discuss here a little bit is talking about how the Windows menu has changed over the years and why it seems to have gotten worse and what some of that negative criticism has been and uh, forced some of the changes. And even now they're making changes that I think are more problematic. And we're going to have a look at the end of the video. We're going to look at how Linux does some of the menus and look at some of the what is actually a little consistent across Linux that Windows might be able to learn from, even though these are things Windows did a long time ago. Let's go ahead, though, and have a brief look at how Windows has changed. I went back to and started at Windows 95, which is where this logic of having your menu at the very bottom of your corner uh, of the screen, where that really started. And then you pull this up and you have programs, you have documents into programs, and you could edit and adjust these things. Under here, you had accessories, games, tools. Now, what I liked about the Windows 95 era and 98 and even XP, you could completely customize this any way you wanted to. You can right click, you can edit these files. It was all good. And I actually had, I wish I still had pictures of how I had my menus back in the day because I really did a good job of organizing everything to the nth degree. And it was absolutely beautiful. In fact, that's one of the things that I really liked about Linux when I got back into it is the full ability to customize things again. So here I am on my actual screaming streaming computer desktop. And you can see here when I pull up the menu, I have some favorite applications that are regularly used. And then what we have here is all the menu categories. But even inside of here, I can right click, I can configure this menu. I clicked the wrong button though. Um, I can, oh, it is configure. Um, and then I can come in here into the menu. I can open the menu editor and I can actually move any of these applications around. I can rename anything. I can do anything in this system that I want. And it's totally awesome. And that's one of the things that I liked about Linux is the flexibility of being able to do what I wanted to do. Of course, we moved from Windows 95. 98 is mostly the same. With XP, we got a slightly different adjustment to this. Of course, this is very similar to um, a couple of the menus that we find in Linux. But here you had your favorites, of course. You had your all programs. And under your all programs, you could go in there and you could, again, fully customize everything. You had your standalone, maybe your more used applications, but you didn't want them in your favorites. And then you had accessories, you had games. Now, some applications would create their own menus. And then, of course, if you were a person like I was in new computers, then someone would be like, oh, my computer's not working well. You put up their computer and their menu like this is like 700 screens long and they got you know every little application through itself in its own little folder with unnecessary things. Some it's like, hey, I got to fix this, you know, uh, but we had flexibility and we had organization. Now, maybe there was a little bit too much flexibility in light of what was going on here. And that really is some of what probably caused a few of the issues. 
Moving on to Windows 7, they kept effectively the same general approach. This is actually a Windows XP versus Windows 7. Of course, we're running a Windows XP here in a virtual machine. You can see the menu's a little different. What they're highlighting here is the icons did get a little bit smaller. And uh, we got a little bit of a shifting here where we got our documents, pictures, basically our core items over here, which I believe is actually something that Windows kind of borrowed from Linux, uh, as this is a the common way to organize things in Linux as well. And then you had your control panels, devices, and things. And then over here, you had your favorites. And then, of course, if you pull up the all programs, you got effectively the same thing as we got over here in XP, where you got the uh, ability to organize things. Now, the downside with 7 is you couldn't organize everything exactly the way you wanted. They reserved some things like all programs or programs were reserved folders. You couldn't actually do anything with any of those. So that was actually some of the downside of it. But... Um, Regardless, it was still a decent thing. Now, this is where we introduced the abomination. Of course, Windows 8 decided that everyone was going tablet all the way, and tablet made a lot of sense. A tablet menu made a ton of sense on a tablet. It did not make a ton of sense on a desktop computer. And this is what brought Windows some deep controversy with Windows 8, where you'd click the start button, and instead of getting a little screen, you'd get this giant massive abomination of various moving and flickering and wiggling tiles and there was actually a button which is not displayed on this screen here but there was a button where you could go and see all applications and then it gives you a giant list of things this received overwhelming negative feedback and is what caused windows 8 to disappear from the circuit of windows uh, versions so quickly it was that nobody liked this stuff and so with windows 10 we saw the reversion of more of a classic menu albeit one you could not adjust or change at all to me this was an abomination it borrowed from the idea of just basically listing apps now this basic style was actually taken from the windows phone which the windows phone this layout made perfect sense once again on a desktop operating system it did not make a lot of sense as you're looking for an application maybe you're looking for something that's a game or you're looking for something that is a a office application it makes a lot of sense to organize organize things the way that they did in the past, or at least give you the flexibility to organize things. But instead, we just get this massive, unbearing, alphabetized list, which even included things like the uninstall for applications that always gets installed when you install some weird thing and stuff like that. The advantage we did get is we, we did get these live tiles, which were not totally horrible in my opinion where you could pin your most popular or your, your most common apps over here that you could click those and you could open them up uh, from this menu so of course you just put everything you want on a regular basis and ignore this menu altogether then of course we get the windows 11 uh, sure abomination where we open it up though i'm looking for an application and instead i get this giant massive list of nonsense we got weathers and to do's and calendars and a search bar and then we have just your basic applications again you just your favorite ones maybe your most go-to maybe this is a slight improvement because you don't always have this alphabetized nonsense list but when you click on that then you got the alphabetized list and of course to still get some of your favorites this is what people are still complaining about now and what windows is making a change do so are you ready for the upcoming abomination Hold your breath, guys. This gets worse. Somehow Windows makes this worse. Here's the next. So uh, according to uh, the Canary Builds, uh, this is still an active development. Parts of this are not working. But they are getting a new layout to organize your apps. What are they doing? Well, instead of using this basic all apps alphabetized abomination layout, now they want to categorize things once again. Only instead of giving us nice menus with lists of applications, which worked perfectly well in this era, and this era, and this era, well, now we're getting something more like you, you get with folders in GNOME, which I think GNOME is the most abominable of the Linux desktops uh, with the default organizer how you can lay things out or again you just get this giant massive 
a grouping of apps in alphabetized order. Of course, you don't have a list. You just get the pictures with the ability to have the titles. Now, in the latest versions of GNOME, I'd say maybe three, four, five versions ago, they have the ability that you could organize things into folders. Well, once again, Windows is borrowing from GNOME, and now that's exactly what they're doing. So now what you have here is, uh, I wish I could make this picture bigger. Let me see if I can do, that's eh, a little bit better. All right, so now what they're doing is they're doing categories and the all apps, you can have a news and weather, navigation, developer, entertainment, maybe music, maybe the one for office suite and then other. And then now you just have inside of these, the blocking of tool of applications. Again, it's just your icons. So as long as you know what your icons are and each one of these only supports four individual icons, but now they're working on expanding this to have up to 16 icons. So now you can see down here under the other where we have these four here. So the idea is you can click over here and open edge. I'm not sure why would you want to, but you can click over here and open edge, or you could click this and pull up these four into here. And now you can click one of these four applications. That's the functionality that apparently people are saying isn't working yet, but we'll see. So this is indeed the new layout they are trying to experiment with. And uh, this is actually showing up inside of the, the latest uh, development builds that people are, are seeing. And we're starting to see this roll out. So you might see more information about this. Uh, to me, this is just making it even worse and even worse. It's just bringing us back down to this level where we're trying to organize things once again, like we used to do, only instead of utilizing lists, which I don't know, maybe I'm an old dinosaur that I think maybe reading builds a little bit of comprehension. Now we're just going with groups of folders with pretty pictures because we have all entered idiocracy. We may as well all just start wearing Crocs. I mean, really, uh, no offense if you like your Crocs, but let's go ahead and chat about how Linux does desktop. So I pulled out a number of different types of desktop environments. Of course, I didn't pull out Cinnamon, but I can show you that right here. Now, Cinnamon, I, I think there might actually be a, maybe a few new menus you can experiment with, but this is your default Cinnamon menu. And of course, you can change this in CSS, just how it looks. And we talked about how you can organize things. As far as other ways of doing applications, looking at XFCE, XFCE goes back and kind of gives us a, uh, a think uh, back, back to kind of like the XP mode. So we have our favorites and we have our organizations. So here we have effectively the same thing. Here's the basic favorites. We can search for any application here. We can click the all button, which will give us uh, basically these buttons here will give us uh, the all folder gives us everything here. The accessories will give us just those listed under accessory. And then the applications in Linux flag on their desktop where they belong in the menu items, which you can actually go in and change if you're not happy with how they're organized. Um, and then, of course, the favorites shows you your favorites here. Recently used is everything recently used. All is everything. And then you can go into these organizations. We have, of course, our settings up here. And I think there's also options where you can put your folders up there as well, like they did back in the 7 era where you have pictures and things like that. That's not depicted on this picture. Here is actually another different menu. So XFCE has a few different types of menus. The previous one's called the Whisker menu. This one here uh, doesn't have a search function, which is the reason I don't generally run it, but it is well organized. Here's your settings, your file manager, uh, and then we have all of our different options. So here's your accessories, and every application flagged as an accessory is over here. And then we move into KDE. Uh, this is a new menu in uh, 5.9. Of course, now we're on uh, 6 or 6.1 or something like that. Um, on KDE, but this is one of the newer menus, but there are a variety of other menus you can use in KDE, including a dashboard, which gives us effectively, this is in a different language here, of course, but this gives us uh, those categories as education, graphics, internet, multimedia, I'm not sure what this one is, but then you click on each of these, it's going to show you all the applications, we have our favorites over here. Uh, this is the dashboard view. Um, this is the menu over here that I personally prefer to use on Plasma, uh, where we have our favorites, all applications. This gives you your computer with all your individual folders and files and things like that. And then we have another menu here, which is a little bit more simplified, some favorites. We have some 
uh, the search bar, and then you can click in these for seeing all the applications. So there's a variety. If you really like variety and uh, tinkering with your system, KDE is still the best way to go. Now, GNOME is a little bit of an oddity because GNOME itself has just the dashboard, which I've already mentioned is pretty bad. Now, there are extensions in GNOME that gives you other types of menus. Some of them are official and some of them are unofficial. This is like Windows. Windows does have extensions and plugins and other applications that you can use to tweak the shell a little bit. But GNOME does have the, some of these shells. Again, some of these menus are official, developed by them that you can add on if you want the extra functionality. Some of them are created by other people. This particular one is called the, uh, the No Shell uh, menu. Um, and so here it's, uh, I presume, favorites. This is our list, applications. So this kind of has some views, almost looks sort of like what we got in Unity. Here's a different one from a GNOME. This is the Arc menu where we have uh, all applications down here. This is our folders, very much like our Windows 7 era. And so you can do that. Here's some Mate menus. So under the Mate, we can search for the application. We can do all, search our categories. We can get into our home folder, desktop, our trash, our system controls, package managers, and things like that. Or we can click this button for your favorites. Then Budgie gives us another simplified menu, uh, which again, now the take home message here is that notice with all these Linux, we have these all of these regular categories. And these regular categories allow you to organize your applications. And if you want, you can tweak your applications to be in different categories if you would like. But that's really one of the things that I think Windows could do if they really wanted to please more people, rather than force these changes, that this new changes does not make sense. But rather than doing this, maybe Windows should give us, like KDE does, a few different options for menus. Maybe give us the ability to go back to like a classic Windows 7-esque type menu. Maybe for those that really like the Windows 8, give us the option to do a full screen dashboard. Hey, I'm okay with it as long as it's not forced on you and it's your choice. That's really what Windows could do to be a better system overall. But there is my take and what's coming up in the, in the world of Windows as we like to cover Windows topics here on Wednesdays on Switch to Linux. So with that, guys, thank you for watching and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And with that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.